Okay, thanks for, for being here with us for lunch. I'm, uh, I'm going to speak about a program that we are developing it and it's helping to improve what we are doing with our patients since it's allow to, it's allow, it allows us to, to measure what we are doing and uh, you've all heard that you can only improve what you can measure, right? So, just an introduction, a couple of slides with data from Europe where I, where I work, but we created objectives, targets uh, for uh, the next years. We want to deliver IVTPA to 18% of <coughs> the stroke patients and, uh, and the vascular treatment to 5%. And of course, there are wide differences between countries, and uh, uh, this is what we aim to do, to try to homogenize <coughs> the numbers and improve everywhere. So in order to do that, we need to implement tailored uh, stroker programs uh, for producing these differences. So uh, to come to a, an example uh, where in my, my network, uh, we do have, uh, or we are well known because we are well organized, recording data and uh, putting them in a registry. We have uh, <coughs> this very uh, uh, detailful uh, registry in which we uh, have all data from any stroke code. Anytime that somebody thinks that that patient may be having a stroke, this patient will end up in the, in the registry <coughs> and will know what happened to him. And we have this network of centers. Uh, similar uh, to the levels that, <coughs> that you all know. And uh, we showed uh, a few years ago that, uh, unfortunately, the access to uh, thrombectomy is uh, obviously related to your geographical location, to where you live, and the further you live from, from uh, the city of Barcelona, the lower are your uh, chances to get uh, uh, access to thrombectomy <coughs> and uh, in longer times. Uh, this is how we are divided. It's very well defined where you're going to be taken, depending on the geographical location where stroke occurs. And what we're doing, what we've done in the last year, is we created a couple of uh, what you call thrombectomy-capable centers uh, that work from eight to five, in which there is a, a, an interventionalist uh, uh, that works with the local team and is able to, do, to do perform the thrombectomy. Uh, these centers are created in the way that uh, they are mentored f by one of the big ones in Barcelona. So we are, my work in this like green dot, and we mentor and we uh, <coughs> uh, help them start this program and we are sending one of our interventionists there uh, uh, every day. And we work with the local team, of course, but uh, it's a way to to, uh, to assess and to accompany uh, the, the, these, uh, these centers in the fir during the first months or years, and we'll, be, we'll see for how long. This center is uh, an hour and a half away by car, long transfer, almost uh, 200 kilometers. And, uh, and you can see uh, in these maps that we also get from our registries how Year after year, we're increasing the penetration of, of, on the vascular treatment in all the geographical regions. But the people from, from this region here, eh, they have a low access because until now they had to be transferred. And uh, that model didn't work well, as we saw. Eh, progressively, we were increasing the number of thrombectomies there by all of them transferred, of course, but with long transfer times. So <coughs> coming down, to the immediate program. What is it? Uh, it offers a comprehensive uh, solutions to improve uh, stroke care uh, all the way from the very beginning of symptoms onset up to follow-up and, and rehabilitation. And it has four, four main uh, arms uh, that are, we're going to discuss two of them. The first we're going to discuss is what we call the patient optimization pathway. The second uh, mean by which uh, uh, you can be helped by the immediate program is by getting access to automated imaging software if uh, it's not available in, in your center. And third, it offers the possibility 
to do tailoring training programs for specific uh, actors, nurses, interventionalists, uh, the stroke team, the ER. And finally, uh, we're also going to talk about the stroke care economics tool. Uh, it helps you calculate what is going to be the impact of a new measure, and with that data you can convince uh, from the uh, economical point of view if this new measure is going to be uh, um, good or not, and it can help you convince uh, the management of your, your, your center. So we're going to talk today about uh, number one and number four. So, together with Medtronic, a couple of years ago, we started this initiative. We call it Patient Pathway Optimization. And uh, w initially, we set around the table a group of experts uh, from uh, Europe and, uh, and the Middle East also. And we put together what we call a, a guidebook that would be a tool that a consultant will be able to use when he goes and assesses uh, a center. So the, the, basically, the goal is to uh, have a consultant that will have a, uh, this guidebook with many, I mean, scales, uh, protocols that are widely known and used and published, but readily available there. And then this consultant was sent, was sent initially in this, in this uh, pilot initial project to the hospital, I told you, we're mentoring in Yeida. And first thing he does, he does an assessment of the situation. He diagnoses what is going uh, well here and what is not working so well after interviewing the staff. So he went there for two, two or three times, two or three days, uh, interviewed with everybody, and uh, performed a, a report identif identifying uh, gaps and uh, it offers a solu solution, uh, solutions that can be applied there uh, in a calendar. Uh, uh, many of them from this uh, textbook or guidebook that we had. And after that, he monitors uh, what's going on during the following weeks and months. And eventually, we can do a second round of interventions in these centers. And this is what we did. Right? So the consultant went to the hospital, he identified, or she in that case identified, uh, that there were problems with the ambulances, there were problems, specific problems in the ER where it took too long, there was not CTP available, there, was, there were not doing, they were not using a, a checklist. So many, many uh, points in each of the steps. Then uh, we measured, or he me she measured, some uh, the current metrics in these centers, and she uh, elaborated a plan with solutions to uh, address each of these points. And finally, uh, uh, she defined what would be the targeted uh, KPIs, uh, so a specific door to needle time, door in, door out time, uh, that should be um, uh, attained. And here are the results. You can see uh, what happened before and after the immediate program that uh, took place uh, in uh, the, between the first and the second quarter of this year. So you can see how uh, the projected number, because we, we evaluated a few, uh, a few months ago, before the end of this year, <coughs> um, this initial assessment. But we project that this year we're going to start increasing the IVTPA treatments that were progressively decreasing, we continue or we decreased the door to CT time, the door to needle time dramatically in this case. And in relation to endovascular treatments, you can see that in this case, because since 2019, they are all, or we are also performing in, in, in that hospital uh, thrombectomies during the daytime, but the projected number of thrombectomies uh, for, the, for this year is uh, going to uh, increase uh, considerably. And you can see how the, 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 the door in, door out time is decreasing also uh, very nicely. So we can, in a very few weeks or months, initially already start to see the effects of this program, uh, and uh, and uh, it, it, we, are, uh, we are very happy. We thought, by the way, that some of these measures uh, could also help ourselves in a big uh, in a big comprehensive uh, center. So so we 
we also took uh, the simulation uh, test, uh, uh, meaning that uh, you take a fake patient and you uh, you you bring it uh, through the through the workflow in hospital workflows, either straight to the CTE or straight to the Angie suite, and uh, and even in our center, in which uh, initially I thought it could not be very uh, necessary. But uh, by doing this, these uh, simulations, we, we also learned a lot and, and, and we're happy we did it. Anyway, second step and, uh, is uh, this economic tool, a calculator, in which, uh, that you can use uh, for anything. You, so you think about a future scenario that you would like to implement. Of course, it uh, usually has a cost. And uh, you want to know if on top of uh, the expected clinical benefits that you, you, you expect from this new scenario, new measure, you can, uh, is there, is there going to be a, a, a savings, savings or not? So it's a kind of calculator that Medtronic developed. They uh, included uh, algorithms and uh, uh, and, and you can include the specific cost information from each center. So in that case, uh, they, uh, incl they included in, in the calculator the costs of each of the services that the, uh, so the, 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 um, the cost per day in the stroke unit, in the, in the ICU, uh, the cost of a CTA or for a thrombectomy or the material, everything is in the, in the calculator. And then uh, you can start playing with the numbers. So in this case, uh, we were interested in uh, calculating what would be the impact of a second angiosuite suite in our center in order to be able to take directly to the angiosuite suite a much higher number of patients uh, because we want to dedicate the second angiosuite suite uh, for as uh, the one-stop uh, shop where all the, all, the, <coughs> all the patients will be able to uh, be admitted directly. So we based the study in uh, our publication in which we matched uh, patients and, and, and controls and uh, in which we observed that there is a definitely a reduction of time and uh, an increase in the good outcomes. And I presented this uh, a couple of days ago here. And uh, so this is the control scenario, right, in which we do the things uh, like we are doing uh, today, in which we take the patients through the ER to the CT and the angel suite, and now we are imagining this new scenario in which we cut these intermediate steps and we take the patient straight to the angel suite, right, and we have data for both scenarios, and we want to invest in a second angel suite, and it has a certain cost that we calculated and uh, so here are the costs if we would continue during the next years doing the same. Yeah? We'll have this rate of 40% rate of, of good ranking score. Uh, this costs 20,000 euros per patient, uh, and uh, long-term cost would be close to 100,000 euros, right? Now, uh, if we pretend to say 49 minutes, and according to the published data, uh, what is going to be the, uh, the cost or the savings? So we didn't do a simple scenario uh, in which we just uh, compare one to the other. What we did is we compared the present scenario in which all the patients would go to the usual workflow to a new scenario in which after implementation of a second angel suite gradually year after year, we're going to increase by 20% our rate of patients directly uh, transferred to the angel suite, and we're going to reach a plateau of 80% because realistically, we cannot think that 100% of our thrombectomies will go straight to the angel suite. We are always going to be either not uh, pre-warned or we are not going to uh, detect the patient initially. <clears throat> so this is the scenario. The new scenario will be progressively over four years a gradual increase and a plateau uh, up to 10 years, uh, doing 80% uh, following the direct transfer to Angel Suite. And so the time frame would be the next 10 years, what are going to be the costs during these next 10 years, and the investment in a second Angel Suite and to staff this Angel Suite and some other protocols around it to uh, implement and increase the number of, of patients directly transferred would be 4 million euros. So this is the baseline scenario. 
So the absolute reduction, according to the publication, is around 10, 11% in the global rate of no disability. However, with this gradual scenario, uh, the, the difference in, in, low, in, uh, in the ranking score at three months would be 40 versus 45%. But on top of that, you can see the distribution of the ranking scores, according also to uh, real data from our publication, is that you are basically increasing uh, a lot the number of ranking scores of, of ones, and you decrease the most expensive ones, or one of the most expensive ones, which is the ranking score of four with this new scenario. By, and also keep in mind that you reduce around 40, 40 to 50 minutes uh, the door to growing time. So the results are here. You can see for each patient, the uh, reduction in in-hospital cost would be around 2,000 euros, which is moderate, 12,000 euros per, per patient. So overall, for, for each new patient, but over these, new, with these 10 years, we're going to be saving 15,000 euros per patient, but during 10 years, which comes to, uh, <coughs> again, an increase 5% in the good rate of good outcome that we knew, an 11% decrease on in-hospital costs, and a 16% decrease in long-term long -term cost per patient. So after 10 years, we're going to be saving 27 million on top of the investment of uh, the 4 million initial investment. Uh, we're going to save uh, 23 million after three years, the investment is going to be paid back, and uh, 70 more patients will be independent, uh, and the number needed uh, to treat for an additional uh, good ranking will be 8-8, eight, eight, which is uh, quite, quite impressive. So these two tools, I, I believe, are, I, were, in our case, they were very, very useful for both cases. The first were... Uh, it was uh, uh, to help this new center uh, achieving uh, good results, good workflows, and be efficient. And the, and the second tool, to convince our management at the hospital that uh, this kind of investment is going to be paid back uh, soon. And on top of that, we're going to have uh, better outcomes for our patients. So... <clears throat> The, 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 these are, uh, of course, uh, solutions that are very flexible, that you can, you can adapt to each of uh, your uh, realities, wherever you work, and to, to any of uh, your uh, projects that you can imagine and that you, can, uh, that you may want to, to develop. And before initiating uh, all the efforts, it is, uh, it is uh, interesting to have also uh, a cost-effectiveness cost uh, uh, evaluation before you start uh, a, a new project. I think this is everything I wanted to share with you now. Thank you very much.